So um, this is the Central Florida chapter, if you will, of TechSoup. And Tech for Good is a program under TechSoup and so is Net Squared. My name is Aretha Simons. I am the Central Florida community organizer for Net Squared. And again, we are a program under TechSoup and Net Squared is a global network for Tech for Good. You'll see that hashtag Tech for Good meetup groups. And Tech for TechSoup is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits either get, implement, or use technology. And I hope you are taking advantage of TechSoup. I meet so many nonprofits that say, no, I never heard of TechSoup. There's all this software and um, products and services that you can use. And it is a global network. Their net square, this community that we're in, that we're doing today, it's in 128 cities in over 41 countries. So I know we're doing Central Florida, but there's some people who join us from other countries, from other cities. So this is a community that you can be a part of. You can be a part of the Texas group. You can be a part of the um, Georgia group. If you see a topic that you like, just jump in and become a member and you know get all the knowledge. Um, and as I said, it's a global network. So here, I want to share a few things with you about the Net Squared community. Again, we welcome everyone. So again, there are people from other groups that join us. Uh, we do put community first here at TechSoup and then Net Squared. We're here to support each other. So we share knowledge, resources, information. And you know, as nonprofits, we are always trying to build stronger communities. And TechSoup does that by giving technology as one of the tools that they use. So with this form today, we're gonna to invite everybody to participate. You can type in the chat room because everybody has something to contribute. Um, even though we have you know, expert speakers that come, you may know something, you may have worked in the field. So share your knowledge, just type in the, in the chat room. And one thing I do want everybody to remember, we treat everybody with kindness and respect. So that's one of the philosophies of TechSoup. So I do want to say that we need your help. I need your help. Uh, we need event producers. We need people to market it, share this information, get it out on your social medias to your friends, your family, especially those who are in the nonprofit community. Um, we need a welcoming crew. We need somebody to be in that chat room, welcoming everybody to be a moderator in the chat room. We also need note takers because afterwards we like to put notes up and you know highlights on a blog. So um, anyone can plan an event. If you have ideas, or if you wanna speak at one of the events, we do this monthly, just um, type in the chat room, say, hey, I have a topic I'd like to share, or I know somebody who'd be a great speaker, just share their information. And again, I invite you to speak anything to do with technology that nonprofits can use, that would be great, or any consulting that you do. So I told you about NetSquare, but let's talk about TechSoup a little bit more and how it connects you either with donated products or discounted products. If you've ever looked at TechSoup, it's techsoup.org. There's tons of software and even hardware. There's headphones, there's laptops, um, refurbished computers, and so much more on their website. So please, please take advantage of it. Again, some of it's free, some of it's at um, low cost. This is just an image of the 100 partners that we have. Just a few of them are listed. Um, Microsoft, we're on a Zoom platform. You get a discount on Zoom. For Microsoft, I know they're giving Office for free and even their cloud-based systems. We've got Amazon, Adobe, DocuSign. There's hundreds of them. So go in and take a look. What you do is create an account and you have to be a 501c3. Once you put your information in, you have access to all this information and these wonderful partners. So please do take advantage of it. This is just an example of what TechSoup has. If you have a staff of 10 people, this is some of the technology you can use. Um, the retail price of buying all of this software would be over $2,000. And with TechSoup, you being a member, you'll just pay $201. So, I mean, that's a steal. So that's just kind of some of the information and some of the technology and tools that you have with TechSoup. 
So I'm going to talk about some of the upcoming events real quick. Next month, God, we are almost into March of 2021. Next month, talk about March already. We're going to be talking about how to transform your nonprofit into a sustainable business. And then in April, we're going to be talking about social media tune-ups. I know we all need a tune-up on social media. I do. I get lazy sometimes. And so if we want to keep our nonprofit out there, you know, keep our image fresh, we do need kind of a tune-up on the social media side. So enough about me. I want to welcome our speaker for today. That is James Alexander. And I want to tell you a little bit about him. I got to read his bio. I got to read a few things. Um, his bio is extensive. Uh, he has a master's uh, degree in communications and a bachelor's in broadcasting. Um, he's been a producer for shows that air on the Today Show. He's been a producer at the Daily Buzz. I know some of you in the Central Florida area, you remember the Daily Buzz. He's interviewed um, multiple people, um, including celebrities, um, Russell Simmons, Ron DMC, um, the Backstreet Boys, Robin Thicke, Trey Song, you name it, John Legend. There's so many people, but he's also interviewed our local nonprofits. I have um, seen his shows. I've been a guest on his show. And so I wanted to talk with him about how um, nonprofits can kind of get their message out there and how they can obtain um, media to spread their message. So I want to welcome James Alexander to TechSoup today and Next Square. Thank you so much, Jane. I'll stop sharing my screen and put you up here. Awesome. I mean, I'm. Hey. I'm I got you. I did it. I did it. I know you awesome. were here before. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. And, you know, I'm very excited to be talking about nonprofits. As you know, uh, well, as Aretha knows, I'm a Shriner as well. So I'm, I'm the director of social media for the state of Florida uh, for the Shriners and for our, our bigger organization. I am the associate editor of our um, digital magazine. Um, so I do quite a few things outside of being an entrepreneur and speaker and so on and so forth. So yes, television has been a uh, labor of love. It's been crazy. It started off in news in Baltimore, then I moved here to Orlando for that little known show called The Daily Buzz, which transformed my life uh, for the last, well, well, I was there for 10 years. So uh, I've done that. I've produced commercials. I've done a little summer everything, um, even done the... Uh, well, we don't even have it anymore because of the pandemic. Uh, we used to do movie junkets where they would send me out to California or New York. And whenever they would come out with a movie, uh, I got a chance to see it before everyone else and also interview the stars of that movie as well. So yeah, it wasn't fun, believe me. <laughs> it, was, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. It was okay. I had, to, I had to sit in the makeup chairs, wait to be called. It was like a cattle call. So, wow. kind of way. But yeah, but my, my love, um, when Aretha told me about this, I, I mean, I love nonprofits. I mean, it's what we, what I'm, it's, it's a major part of me. And um, one of the things that we, we, we do on the shrine level, um, in fact, I had to come up with the entire infrastructure for our whole marketing, branding, and so on and so forth for the state of Florida, um, is that we, we took a step back and we prioritized what, um, where we would make the most impact. So we, you know, online was for us. Um, although, yes, I know how to do television. I still have connections in, in television and a lot of stations around here in Central Florida and New York. Um, that wasn't our first, that wasn't our, that wasn't at the top of, of the list. Uh, and, and I caution anyone who has that at the top of their list that they must be on TV. There are several ways to get on TV. But if you dominate the internet first, you'll, you'll be able to uh, make that transition to TV. Okay. What we have done, um, what we have done in, in the state of Florida is we've partnered with Google. So we are a, a certified community partner with Google. Um, with that comes a lot of opportunities to, to learn um, how to kind of market ourselves on online especially through the biggest search i mean database <laughs> in the world which is google and how we could do it on just there but also um coming in and understanding the whole landscape of marketing when it comes to social media as well 
It's just, you know, a combination of the two to get us out there. Um, so we've started this journey. Uh, <laughs> it has not been easy. And uh, what I would say is if, if you are about to do this, there are some things that I want you to definitely master uh, before you start spending money. Because a, a lot of nonprofits, uh, they have limited budgets. And because of that limited budget, you don't want to put yourself uh, in a position where you spend a lot of money and get little return. So there's a few things that you should do. One of the, one of the first things is have a meeting with, with all your stakeholders, okay? Uh, meet with them, decide what course of action you're gonna take, okay? Um, I wouldn't even talk about money first. Let's decide what platforms are we gonna be a part of. Um, a lot of nonprofits, as you see, are basically a part of everything. Um, but the problem with that is, you want to see where your demographic is coming. You know, everyone, every nonprofit is different and they're and they're uh, the people that they service or they're trying to get in front of is kind of different. Um, I can tell you right now, we have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Okay, those are the, the massive ones. Yes, we have our website, um, but those three are the massive ones. But we've also talked about TikTok, doing things on TikTok because TikTok is a massive platform and people are looking for information. And, um, and what, you know, the history that we have will play well on TikTok. If anybody has a TikTok account, you will see some of the different videos and they give document, it's like a documentary style, like very quick videos, part one, part two, and so on and so forth, right? So, you know, one, one unique thing about our history is that we, are, uh, if you go back to Supreme Court ruling, we're responsible for um, making sure that there are black fraternities and sororities in existence to the day. Um, it was a landmark ruling in our favor. Um, and if, if we had lost, there would be no alphas, alpha phi alphas, alpha kappa alphas. I mean, excuse me. AKAs, don't, don't let me get in trouble because I <laughs> tell to us if we say it correctly. I don't want to get in trouble. I love all my divine nine. I love y'all. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, that's, that's just history. So when you look at our vice president, Kamala Harris, and, and she belongs, she's an AKA, right? Yes. Yeah. And I want to ask you something. So you're mentioning, you know, social media, and mm -hmm. those are definitely ways when you try to get on TV or getting your message out through TV, do they look at that? Um, do they go, you know, search you because people want to Google your name or Google your nonprofit and see like how how ranked you are? Do you have a lot of views? And when you were thinking about having someone on your show that was a nonprofit, what was the first thing that you did um, to I search believe, that nonprofit? I looked at the co the, the content first. Uh, because I'm a little bit more sensitive to nonprofits because I belong to a massive one. Um, so for me, I don't want to look at content and what the impact was. All right, so if you're dealing with someone that's not like me, you got to look at numbers. What numbers do you have? What impact do you have online if I partner with you? Because essentially this is a partnership. You think it's not, you think you're just appearing on television, but I'm giving you credibility, using my time, my money, my airwaves to give you credibility to your nonprofit. So when you look at this in its entirety, it is a great partnership because what you want to do is make such an, a, an awesome impression on that producer, on that news director, on that assignment editor. I'm talking about television, television wise, that they are more likely to allow you to come back. Right. So the numbers are going to speak volume. So when you go to your social media, when they go and research you, and they figure out, all right, so they have 100 people on social media. Mm, maybe not. If they're doing an event, who's all involved? Is the mayor involved? Is the chief of police involved? Um, what, how, you know, what big names do they have involved? And, and don't take it as a disrespect if they do come to your event and they interview those big names and interview you last. Uh, because that was, those are the people in the community that are easily recognizable and you're a you know, then you talk about using that example, kind of like a startup. Um, so they're going to ask why are they partnering with you? What's the significance and so on and so forth. And that's important, but that's, that's great. 
But if I have somebody that has 5,000, 10,000 um, people online, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or uh, you know any other platform, I am looking at, okay, this is a major one. Now, there's a pitfall with that. Because you have so many people, is this going to be a commercial? Or is, are they really promoting something that's going to impact the community? And that's where they kind of draw the line. Um, back in the day, I'm dating myself. I'm, I'm old. Uh, they, you know, it became a fine line between commercial and actual news. Um, you know, if it lends itself to being a commercial for for that organization, then that's airtime you can pay for. So, you know, that's it's it's a fine line. But if you find the right people, you make the race relationships, and that's what it comes down to. Ultimately, you make the right relationships, you're able to get on television. But again, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would not do that first. I would just build up my my base and do things online via social media, email newsletters, my website, drive people. I would do webinars, uh, you know, something in something along that nature, in order to bring people to your page and just build that base up. Then when you call in the television and you call in the radio, or you call in all these other places, mm -hmm. you're you're able to do some things. I mean. I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I'm gonna ask this question of everybody. Have you guys started your own podcast? Um, I'm gonna allow you to unmute yourself. And I do want you to know, this is gonna be like interview style. So oh, yeah. uh, feel free, I'm gonna let you ask questions live. You don't have to come on camera, but this is a great time to you know ask questions and get information. So how many of you have a podcast? You can unmute yourself. No one has a podcast. No one has a podcast. Okay, if you're a nonprofit, um, I can tell you right now, you need to start developing your own podcast. You can do it. Off, I mean, you don't even have to do. You can do a, like a Zoom interview, similar to what we're doing now, and put it live on Facebook, live on your social media channels, um, even on your YouTube page. You can, you can do that stuff. Start um, start filling. Look at it as, as documenting your process. Documenting, you know. Um, what it takes to be a, you know, what your nonprofit is doing, basically, what it takes to be a volunteer to nonprofit, what it takes to run it, and so on and so forth. People like seeing that. Why? Because it gives you credibility. They see where their money is going. They're like, oh, okay, you know, if I donate to, uh, I'm just pulling out, if I donate to Karen, all right, I hope I'm saying it correctly. If I'm not, I apologize, love you. But I donate to Karen, um, I can see that if I get $5,000, what she's going to do with it, based upon what I've seen through her videos and I listen to on her podcast, when I wake up to the, the graphics on her Facebook page and the events that she has, I see what kind of impact $5,000 would do for that nonprofit. So now you're giving people more visuals. As you know, we are more visual. I mean, as, as it, 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 I would say this, and you got to look at it too as a, I know we're not profit, but as a business, okay? And you're trying to get people to donate to you. Um, back in the day, I want to say 2000 to 2004, it was three times. So if I put my graphic video or whatever in front of you of my nonprofit three times, you are more likely to donate something, right? Um, as far as businesses, the same thing with business you are more likely to buy something. And that's essentially what you're doing. Okay. When I left, it was up to 12. And that was 2014 when I left the Daily Buzz. Um, kind of ventured on my own, started producing other stuff and started my own company in the healthcare. Um, now it's over, over upwards of 20. So you're saying you need to be in front of their face at least 20 times? That's why you see retargeting like when you visit a website, even on your phone, you will go to another website, another website, another website, but you will see on the side some sort of um, commercial or, or advertising from a website you visited two days ago. There's technology out there retargeting so on and so forth. They have to stay in front of you constantly in order to see would you flip the switch and buy. Um, the same thing we're going through with one of my companies, uh, my CBD oil company. We have marketing to where it retargets 
but we're also on more than we're on more than six thousand websites and what we're doing as far as our marketing. So, you know, when you look us up, you should be retargeted, retargeted, retarget because we want you to buy. And that's kind of how you have to look at this. All right. You may not have the money to have them uh, to have to make that happen. OK, because it's expensive. <laughs> it's not cheap. But what you can do is put out enough content, enough shareable content. And that's one of the things I want you to keep note of. Shareable content is the best content you can have. Why? Because it's shareable. <laughs> it's self-explanatory. And I tell you this why, I tell you this because one person can share content to 20 or 30 pages. That person, whoever's on those pages, if they have five, 10, 15, 20,000 people, if it comes up early enough, depending on when it comes up, then you have those that many eyes that are looking on it, that are interacting with it, that are con commenting on it. All that data can be seen through your back portal when you when you do Facebook. So when you look at that, you say, okay, I'm making an impact. And you can kind of decide of whether or not to put like a, a donate link and so on and so forth in that in that uh, content, which would be great because now you have you give an opportunity to people who um, may instantly say, you know what, I want to donate. I like what she's doing. I like what he's doing. I want to donate right now. And you just made it easier for me to donate by providing a link. I can go to the website. I can see everything. And boom, it's there. So with that being said, you really, really want to create shareable content that's going to help you tremendously. On our page for the, for the, um, for the Shriners of Desert of Florida, Prince Hall Shriners, if you want to go look, it's nothing but community work. It's a ton of community work. We do seminars. We do, um, you know, we talk to Google. We talk to different business leaders. Uh, we've had investing uh, groups. Uh, we've done a lot of things as we provide content, not only for, um, we provide content for everybody. So it's content for our, our or members of our organization and also content for those who, who come to our page to kind of say, oh, okay, this is what you guys are, are into. You're actually helping everybody and you're providing, you're becoming a resource. Mm -hmm. So shareable content is key, um, but you have to develop a plan. I'm saying all this stuff and while I'm telling you this, you have to sit down, develop that plan, get a calendar and a, really a social media calendar mm -hmm. and lay out what you want to see over a month. And you can automate this stuff. Don't think you have to go in and, and produce stuff every day to where it's killing you. Like, oh my God, I got to do something to get, what I'm going to come up with today. Nope, you can plan a month out. Um, there are different websites, uh, apps that you can use in order to do this. And you kind of go from there. And I'm wondering, actually, Aretha, do you guys have under TechSoup, do you have Canva? No, Canva is its own platform and it's free anyways. Yeah, well, they, not, they have a paid session. They have the, I know they have a higher level where you bro. can pay because I have that as well, but right. uh, I don't think Canva is one of our partners. Okay. Okay. Um, if you can afford it, um, I don't, I got to get the list of what TechSoup has, but if you can afford it, Canva Pro is a great opportunity to create like a group, I mean, great content um without spending a ton of money you can embed videos you can do presentations you can do a, 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 a plethora of things and you can, you can publish directly from canva to your uh, to your social media pages so i would i would advise to, to jump in that to give it a look and see if you can you can do it and anybody can do it i mean it's easy stuff um you also have music on there too but uh but yeah yeah, it is. I think you gave great advice to social media calendar because a lot of times we we get busy and we get distracted and we just like, oh, it's I did it Monday. I forgot to do it Wednesday. So having that calendar and those other platforms that you can automate it. Um, so that's great. And Canva, yes, it is definitely is a good one. I've been using it for a couple of years. It's a good one. I've used the pro. Then I went back down to the free because I've learned some other websites. But that's great advice. Um, anyone have any questions for James? I, you can unmute yourself and feel free to ask any questions at this time. You've been um, sharing a lot. Uh, as I was listening to you, yeah, I was thinking um, everybody wants to be on TV because they think that that's going to be their chance. I remember when I had a nonprofit and I yeah. actually got my first chance to be on TV. It it was a it became a good problem 
<laughs> because then I wasn't ready for some of the other yeah. things that people wanted me to do. Be, be careful so, what you get blessed with. Exactly. <laughs> you pray exactly. for it, you got it. Exactly. So, uh, I, th I think, yeah, I mean, that um, make sure you have the infrastructure in place to handle, uh, it depends on where you go too. So make sure you have the infrastructure in place to handle that that onslaught of uh, inquiries uh, as to what you're doing, how people can be a part of it, uh, how they can support, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and, and it's like you said, it's a good it's a good headache. Honestly, uh, you have the opportunity to really um, expand, right? Uh, and you know that's that's great. But if you if you don't put it together in a way that, that allows for that, uh, people are gonna feel that you're unorganized and they're, not, they're gonna look at us like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be a part of it. Remember, people are always looking for opportunity to say no. They're all constantly, constantly, like the first thing is, no, no, I wanna do it. I don't wanna be a part of it. No, no, then when you show them things, sometimes they still may say no. But at the end of the day, it, it kinda, as you continue to do things, they, Nah, let me go out and participate. Let me be a part of it. And once they start enjoying it, they start telling their friends, and their friends start telling their friends and so on and so forth. It's just like Yelp reviews. And I had um, the Googles, one of our, our Google digital coach for the desert of Florida. She was telling me that um, she will go to different products or different services. And if she saw her friend like it, then she, would, she wouldn't question it at all. Okay. She wouldn't question it but she didn't see anybody that she knew liked it or she would scrutinize it, highly scrutinize it and um, then make a determination whether or not she will, she will want the services or so on and so forth. So, you know, I, I just tell you, um, just be prepared for everything uh, because, you know, even, even with, you know, I know we're talking about television and so on and so forth, and, but um, and social media too. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, you can raise an easy million dollars through social media you can do it within a couple of months. Yeah. It's so, so easy to do. Sure. Definitely the future. Well, mm -hmm. I know we have small and mid-sized nonprofits here. And okay. You talked about social media and you just mentioned um, the Google platform that you use. Can you tell us more about that? Um, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, through my infinite network, <laughs> uh, I just so happen to um, come across, you know, Google does, I knew they did a lot of stuff with the community, but and I'm gonna be honest with you, even with my knowledge of all this stuff, I, I am a graduate, they don't even have a program anymore, but I'm a graduate of Google Accelerate, uh, which is a marketing kind of, it was like a marketing school, so to speak, you go online, you learn how to do all the marketing, you graduate with a certificate on digital marketing, so on and so forth. Um, and they've, they've changed so much with the algorithms and so on. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm going to stay away from that. But I know Google did a lot of stuff with the community because they're all, always trying to expand, right? Um, so I asked the question, what can Google do for me? Uh, what could it do for my organization? And it turns out Google can do quite a bit. And once you become a, a Google partner, there, there are numerous things that you have access to. Um, and there are numerous people that you have access to, uh, and it, it's a great thing. So Google for us has, we're still unraveling it, right? So I still have meetings, uh, with the digital coach. Um, I'm still going through the community. Uh, we have a 501 C three for our, our, for the state of Florida. And, uh, we also have obviously nationally, we have it, um, cause we have over 265 different, um, temples across the U.S. We say temples, but it's not religious, we're not religious. But um, we have 265, not excuse me, across the world, because we have organizations in Japan. Um, we have sites in Japan, South Korea, um, Kuwait, um, um, Bahrain, the Kingdom of Bahrain, uh, all the way across the U.S., uh, 48 different states. So we're, we're kind of large, right? So uh, for us, it became important uh, to look at our footprint and to partner with somebody that will allow us to expand that footprint um, and expand uh, 
well, help us ex to get into people we haven't been in front of um, and introduce ourselves to new people. So Google has been a, a basically has been a great opportunity. And what I can do, Aretha, what I'll do, I'll send it to you. I can't do it right now, but I'll send you the, um, I'm looking at the message on chat, I'm sorry. I'll send you um, some information on, I'll, I'll respond to that in a second. Uh, I'll send you some information on the, um, the Google, who, the Google person, um, the community, and I'll that way you can share it with everybody so they can see it as well. Uh, so the question is, um, yes, I reached out to Google. Uh, Shriners, um, who is who is uh, Shriners? Okay, so we are the ancient Egyptian Arabic order nobles of the mystic shrine, North and South America, and its jurisdiction is incorporated. Uh, Prince Hall Shriners. Um, Prince Hall, we named that because Prince Hall was the first man of color to become um, a Mason, actually, because it's a prerequisite to become a Shriner, so become, you have to be a Mason. Um, and he did it so uh, we could bury our dead. And that was way before uh, we had the, the United States was even born. So we go way back. Um, but the Shriners, well, what we do, there are two organizations of Shriners. Um, you have the ancient Arabic order of nobles in the Mishra Shrine, which is known, which are who are known for uh, the Shriners hospitals. Um, they do a, a lot of events. You see a lot of guys riding around with the cars, doing the parades and so on and so forth. Um, they used to do a, a ton of golf tournaments and so on and so forth. But you see their, their headquarters in Tampa, actually. Uh, you go down there and here in Orlando, Orlando you have Bahia. Um, they've expanded, they used to have uh, not too far away in Maitland, actually one of the, um, their, their, not headquarters, but their temple was in Maitland, but I think Basically, they left that It is a massive nonprofit. Yeah, that's really, yeah. That's really all so, you need to know, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, but I, I just want to say, I want to say this. Yes, that's true. But on our side, we help out St. Jude. We have National Diabetes Initiative. We sit on the board for the American Diabetes Association. Um, so we do quite a few things. We have youth groups, we do uh, mentors, we, we do a ton of things in our community. So yeah, two great organizations, but that's what Shriners are. Okay, Marguerite, you put a question in there about Google, the Google platform, you had problems with your G Suite and you said you spent hours um, untangling. I'd like to know if you, if you contact Google because I know the G Suite was a kind of a new thing. I don't know if they worked out all the kinks, but I would definitely like to know if you were able to work out that with Google. And he mentioned Google. I don't know if many of you have applied for the Google grant because we're talking about marketing and getting your message out. Uh, apply for the Google grant. Free money. Google gives um, $10,000 to nonprofit 501c3s and it's advertising dollars. You know, people pay money to be at the top um, of the page whenever you look up something. But Google is giving nonprofits $10,000 and advertising dollars. So Make sure you um, look for that, apply for it, and then you have to keep up with it because you can't just apply for it and just let it sit. You, you have to go on there and you know fill out everything they ask for. They ask for your keywords. They ask you to put in information. You have to do that on the monthly basis. Otherwise, they'll think you're, you're not doing anything. So make sure you look up the Google grant. And a G Suite is a part of TechSoup's platform. So Good. you can go on there and get that for free and also Microsoft Office, you can get that for free, but- How many people know sure. about, I'm gonna be honest with you, Rita, how many people know about Google AdWords? Yeah, we, well, we, we do know about it and we did get that grant, but we are so small and spread so thin, we were not able to take advantage of it. And okay. when we got the free Z, G Suite account, which we did, okay. Um, then, then we tried to connect our G Suite uh, to Microsoft Outlook, which is where everything else <laughs> lives, and it suddenly decided to disconnect itself. And we spent hours and hours with them and could never get it reconnected and finally just had to give up on G Suite, which was very painful because our current uh, email um uh server 
gets blocked a lot of times. And so I'd love to go back to G Suite, but we don't know how. <laughs> I guess we need technical support to help with that. Well, I'm glad you told me that because I would definitely share that um, with our team. That's feedback they, they like to know at TechSoup uh, what problems that our partners are having with um, the partners who you know provide products for our nonprofit. But I definitely would reach out to tech support through, through um, that platform that you use. And can you, can you stay in touch with me through the meetup group and let me know how it works out? And I see your email in there, but just send me an email. Yeah, question. Okay, you, I would love to do that. Thank you. Marguerite, were yes. you assigned anyone from Google once you did that? Assigned a, a special person? Yeah. No, no, we never were. Um, so they, they and and we could, yeah, yeah, we could never really get any response from Google, and maybe we weren't doing it right, but. Uh, but when we started dropping email messages, we panicked and went back to a previous uh, email provider. I can understand. Okay. All right, so I'll, um, I'll share with Aretha, um, our person, and what I'll do is uh, I'll start asking questions as to why that happened. That would, that would be great because we would really, really like to take advantage of this whole Google nonprofit Thing and we're pretty much Google people, except that I'm an old guy and I run my life through Outlook. And so, uh, so there's that conflict all the time. Um, okay. Okay. I, I mean, I, the reason why I asked everyone about AdWords and thank you, Marguerite, uh, I just wanted to, to, you know, you guys be careful with that. <laughs> AdWords, uh, your budget, that $10,000 can go out the door in a few days, <laughs> depending on how you do it. Um, but AdWords is a, yes, it's a great platform and there's so many different tools within AdWords, um, AdSense and so on and so forth. But there's so many different tools within there. Um, you're looking at specific words for, for, um, for your nonprofit. I mean, it could be a, a great tool, but your budget can go pretty fast depending on how it goes. So um, usually, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you, Aretha about it and we'll kind of go from there as far as trying to figure out if we can get you somebody that can help out, okay? That would be great, thank you. So Sabrina asks, um, how can she get G Suite for her small nonprofit through TechSoup? Um, you go to techsoup.org, I put the um, website in the chat room. You set up an account, it's free, upload your information and then you have access to all of the 100 partners um, also, you know, look for software there, um, grant software in there. There's, there's all kinds of technology and products and services that you can use. So you, you're going to have fun. Um, I'm kind of interested in knowing what, okay. what platforms everyone is on right now and how many members do you have? What, pla what do you mean what platform is everybody on? Social right media? Now? What platform oh, are you guys okay. utilizing? Okay, right? I'd, I'd be happy to talk about that. Um, we're very active on Facebook. We have two two Facebook pages, um, FL Greenway and SJR, the number two, the letter C. Uh, the, uh, those are those are both our Facebook um, pages, and they're very active. Um, and then uh, the, our website is Drupal, and uh, we have a lot of trouble with Drupal. Needless to say, and uh, but it's a very extensive website, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much. I'm getting started with Instagram, but not not enough time. I have no idea how to start a podcast, uh, and we are just launching a big um, a Trail Alliance partner program, and would really love some help with uh, spreading the word about that uh, launch, and also. Um, we are having a, at Enterprise Museum, which is a little bit north of Orlando, we're having the Lost History Week in March, which um, focuses on um, uh, quite a bit on um, indigenous people, removal and African history uh, that through a grant uh, with Florida Humanities. So we're very busy, but really not technology uh, <laughs> enabled enough at this time. 
Okay, so here's a, here's a couple of tips. As far as your Instagram page, just create the page and you can link up your Instagram and Facebook so that takes care of itself. So whenever you post online Facebook, it automatically goes to Instagram. So you don't have to worry. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I got too many integrations in my head. So yes, <laughs> everything, we link up everything. Actually, we also use uh, um, another, another app. We use HubSpot, we use a couple of other things too. Um, to kind of link up everything, it makes it easier for us. Um, the only thing I'd say we don't do is Twitter because that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, and that could be, that takes a while to monitor. Okay, so with that being said, so that handles your, your Instagram page, your Instagram part, it's easy. You can go back door or Google, go to your settings and you can do it. It'll actually put a password for Instagram, connect everything, you're good to go. Your podcast, you can do your podcast straight from your phone. All right? you have to do is go into the, uh, what do you have? You have the iPhone or you have the Android? Android. Okay, okay. For all of you who have iPhones, shame on you, you should always get an Android. Okay, now go back to, <laughs> right? No, so you can go to the Play Store uh, and you can, you can download an app to do uh, your podcast, which you can link to your Facebook page and it'll take care of itself. So everything, just, just know that, you know, everything is pretty much, everything can be integrated. So you don't have to worry about having to post to each page, each social media site, each platform and so on and so forth. No, you can link them all together and you don't have to worry about it. And you can do your podcast from your phone, okay? Your po you're, literally, you can sit in your car and do a podcast. I hear what you're saying, but I have no idea how to do it. So, <laughs> so maybe, uh, maybe, so we'll, maybe, we'll, and maybe we'll, offline somebody can tell me how to do it. Is, I mean, Aretha, I mean, we can. There are apps within the Play Store we can we can send um, for you to just kind of download to your phone and and kind of go from there, just like you recording your voice. Remember back in the day, we used to do, uh, you know, a voice recording for our, our voicemail. When people like, you know, we used to play music back outside. That, maybe that's just me. I'm old. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be ready for a podcast because it's like everything. Once you start it, you gotta be ready to keep going. So wait till you're ready to get in that space and then then you do that. Um, somebody uh, asked what what else can you implement into your business for more exposure? Before you answer that question, somebody asked, what's the podcast app for Android that you mentioned? I'm sorry, I'm on mute and I got to mute and unmute because I, I want to make sure I, I hear everything. I want any background to distract anybody. So what we're going to do, I want everybody to break out their uh, Android phones and you can break out your iPhones right now. We're going to do this right now because I, I want you guys to be on top of this. Click on your Play Store. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to type in podcast. P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Okay. okay so, many, so many different things you can do on here. So many apps and so on and so forth. All right. What do you guys see on your podcast? I'm listening. I'm sorry. Somebody said something. Just keep going. <laughs> just oh, okay. Okay. I, I thought I, I heard. See, I see about a million podcast apps. Yeah. Just, just go through the steps if you want okay. right. to time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So when you get to the, when you do your, your podcast, all right. So you have um, your podcast player, podcast app. Um, you have your podcast app pack, all these things, Podbean, every one of these apps that you will see, you can create a podcast on. Okay. Which one did you recommend? Somebody said, what was the one that you recommended for the Android? Um, Anchor. Yeah, I have Anchor. I haven't used that much, but I have Anchor. So if you type in podcast app or you just type in Anchor. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So let me go to Miss Miss D's question for the sake of time. Um, she wants to know um, what other ideas do, do you have to implement into your business for more exposure? What ideas can you give out? You, you said social media, you said podcasts. Um, uh, so you're doing social media, you're doing podcasts, you're doing um, your digital marketing, basically you're, well, you're talking about Google ads. Um, I think you should look at every other platform that's out there is new that you can capitalize on honestly um get one of your younger volunteers to jump on it like tiktok and so on and so forth 
outside of that, if you look at, um, in order to expand, I mean, look at partnerships, research what, what companies you can do uh, real partnerships with, um, start introducing yourself to those companies. Um, and every company, every major company has a nonprofit arm. So yes, it's gonna be a lot of competition when it comes to that. But a lot of companies do a lot of nonprofit work um, and want to partner with nonprofits, but they haven't been presented with the opportunity to do so. So search within your community first, then go, go up and you can partner with these, these different corporations. They're looking to give out money, especially at the end of the year. So yeah, so that's one of the things. I think a lot of people, we're talking about media, but a lot of people don't do the homework on that. Um, and the, the worst thing you can do, and this is a life lesson, is go to a company at the last minute and ask for money. Develop that relationship now. Remember, you're like, yo, we need, we need, we need a few thousand dollars so you can help us out. They know you, they know what you're doing. So your ability to get that money goes up because you develop that relationship. So that's about it. That, that's priceless. Anybody else have any questions before we um, end this session? Don't forget to sign up for our next sessions. I'm opening the microphone. You have the opportunity to ask questions. James, I wanna thank you for your time as well. Somebody just typed in a new question here. Let's see. Um, thank you, Sabrina. Dr. Br Sabrina said, thank you. This was great. Um, thank you for coming on. Anybody else have any questions, any comments, any feedback? Okay, well, this has been great. I wanna thank you again. <laughs> everybody for coming on um was that did you have a question nah this is mother i'm just proud <laughs> okay okay great all right great. Thank so, you. Thank um you. Uh, marguerite said uh, this is great um she need more details so yeah, um, we'll be um in touch with you marguerite and um again sign up for the march tech soup how to develop a sustainable nonprofit and then do the social media tune up in April. So I will see you all back um, next month. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>